Welcome to Void Log Index, Index 5, sorry. And this is the series where I share the business and development process of building a billion dollar gaming franchise called Void Pet. The end goal is to be a Pokemon MMO. And we've been working on the like RPG part of that. And last time I talked to you guys, I was like, yeah, we're just gonna make more RPG and keep doing that. But then we got a memo from the HR department and they said, hold up, hold up. Before you copy, paste, and make more and more and more story content, you really should fine tune the game mechanics and make sure everything's in place and it looks good and feels good before you do that. So we switched gears a little bit and started building some other stuff. So far there's nothing MMO about Void Pet. It's not massive, it's not multiplayer. Oh, but it is online, so we got that part. But either way, that changes here with the next feature that I built out, an auction house. The general premise of an auction house is people can put items on it and then other people can bid or buy those items and you can just exchange on the open market, that sort of thing. I chose to implement the details of our auction house using the same system as one of the greatest RPGs of all time, World of Warcraft. The only thing I can think that is special about it is you only keep track of the top bid on an item and you also can't cancel a bit, which makes coding this way easier because I just need one database table for the entire auction house. I call it auction item and it just stores the detail of every item that's on the auction house and each item has who the top bidder is and that's it. To use the auction house, you select an item in your inventory that you wanna sell, then you select the quantity, starting bid and buyout or also known as the buy now amount and bid and buyout are optional, which means you can either put an amount for both or you can only do bidding or only do a buyout. You also select the link that you want your auction to sit on the auction house for. The longer time you choose, the more of a deposit that you have to put. Now the deposit is there because we wanna make sure people are not just spamming with a bunch of crap items. So if your item sells, you get the deposit back. If the item does not sell, you lose the deposit. So this also incentivizes people to actually put items at a reasonable price that actually sells or they're just gonna like lose their deposit amount. And also when an item sells, the auction house of course takes a cut because this is the free market and takes 5%. Once you choose to sell an item, it is no longer in your inventory. It is now in the auction house until the auction house sells that item for you and then you get the money or that item expires after 48 hours, however long you chose, and you get your item back in your inventory. If I choose to bid on your item, the money comes out of my account and goes to the auction house and sits in the auction house until somebody outbids me and I get the money back, or my bid wins after 48 hours and I get the item and you get the money. There's one important database call that happens when somebody bids on an item to avoid race conditions, or at least I'm hoping this is avoiding race conditions. So the important part is in the where clause where we do a couple of checks. First, I make sure you're not bidding on an item that you already sold. Then I'm checking to make sure that no one's bid on the item or that you're not the top bidder already because you don't want to just like keep bidding, or at least I'm preventing that. And then you actually gave an amount that is higher than the current bid. And then lastly, I'm making sure that the item has not expired yet. And because I think that Postgres locks database tables when you update, I'm pretty sure if two people update at the same time, I should not have a problem with that, hopefully. But I'm not exactly a DB expert. This is about as close as I got. Oh, and also, whenever you update a bid, it also adds one minute to the length of that auction item. That way there's not a like bid off at the end and time is the thing that causes you to lose the bid. The last component to the auction house is the background job that checks to see if any auction items are out of time. And then if there's a top bidder on it, it awards the top bidder with the item. Otherwise the item is expired and it goes back to whoever tried to sell it. I call this a background job, but really it's just a set interval that runs every minute on the main server and it queries the top 50 auction house items that have expired and then handles them. Deploying did cause a problem because when I spun up a new server with new code, the old server would run for a few minutes before it died. So I had two background jobs running at the same time. To avoid this problem, what I did is one, I just waited one minute before the new server starts its background job, so hopefully there's no overlap. And then secondly, in case the old server sticks around for way too long, like longer than it should, I just store in Redis now the ID of the server that should be handling the background job. That way, if the background job happens to run, it looks it up in Redis and is like, 
oh, you know what? I'm not the server that should be running this background job anymore. It just dies. Then to tie everything together and make sure you know when your item expires, when your item's been sold, when you're outbid on an item, all these things, I add notifications, this little bell that you can click on in the top right and see when all these events happen. And then to make it real time, I added WebSockets. Since I'm using GraphQL, it's GraphQL subscriptions. So it is ping, ping, sends it to you right when it happens. And yeah, that's pretty much it. That is how I coded the auction house for VoidPet.